Christ community, friends and family, grace and peace to you. Wherever you may be, I hope all of you are healthy and well. This is another Wednesday's Word in this third week of January, January 20th, 2021, as we continue our journey through the Psalms. Uh, today is Inauguration Day, um, so I hope uh, as people of faith we can be uh, prayerful for our outgoing president and his family and our incoming president and his family. Let's continue to pray for our nation. Uh, let's continue to pray for uh, those in government leadership from the federal, state, and local levels uh, so that as people of faith we can really uh, be the prayer warriors that God has called us to be during this time. Uh, regardless of party affiliation, regardless of whether we voted for them or not, let's continue to be mindful and prayerful uh, for our nation in this uh, time of transition. Let's turn to God's Word today. God's Word comes to us from Psalm 16. Psalm 16, verse 8 through 11. Hear now God's Word. I have set the Lord always before me, because He is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken, Therefore my heart is glad, and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to the shoal, or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand, are pleasures forevermore. Amen. So today I want to go over uh, verse by verse some important encouragements I believe the psalmist is teaching us today. Verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me because He is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Have there been moments where your faith has been shaken? Have there been moments where your doubts and your anxieties infiltrate your heart and you fear others, you fear other things before you fear God? And it's in those moments, do you say, Where are you, God? Where are you? But maybe... Maybe we should be asking ourselves, God, are you at our right hand? God, are you residing in our hearts? Maybe we should be asking ourselves, God, are you in front of us right now? You see, placing God in front of us, placing our Lord in front of us to guide us, to protect us, being centered on Christ alone, that's the perfect prescription to not being shaken. In moments when we feel like we are alone, in moments we feel like we are forsaken, and in moments where we feel like we're being shaken left and right, the psalmist challenges us and is asking us, are we putting our Lord in front of us? Verse 9, Therefore my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. So once you center your life on Christ, once you center your life on the Lord, Once you fix your eyes on God alone, it's a cause and effect. Your heart should feel glad. Your whole being should be rejoicing. Your flesh should dwell in security. The psalmist is reminding us of the connection between the heart, mind, and soul. If you're emotionally not healthy, that's going to take a toll on your physical, mental, spiritual well-being. If you're mentally not healthy, same thing. It's going to take a toll on everything else. If you're physically not healthy, if you're spiritually not healthy, it's going to take a toll on everything else. You name it. God created us with the heart, mind, and soul. God did not create us with one or the other. God did not create us with just the heart without a mind and soul. God created us with a heart, mind, and soul. Verse 10. For you will not abandon my soul to show or let your Holy One see corruption. Now when the psalmist says that the Holy Ones holy ones won't see corruption, we have to take a step back and remind ourselves that corruption isn't defined by us. We don't get to define what corruption is. It's defined by God. You see, if we think we've hit rock bottom, that might not be rock bottom for us. Right? Whether we are in a trial or struggle, we cannot judge with a preconceived notion that, that, oh man, oh man, this is it. We're done. This is the worst of the worst. Because only God can judge that. We can. When we think we have hit rock bottom, maybe that's not rock bottom. 
But here's the thing. God will not abandon the church. Amen? God will not abandon the church. Why? Verse 11. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. He will not abandon us because He knows our path. He's the one that created our path. And it's in that presence that there will be full joy. But if we are thinking, I don't, I don't have joy. I'm doing all that I can. Why aren't I having joy right now? Then we have to repent because we're trying to make our own definition of joy. And that's not what Scripture is teaching us. If we're thinking of the joy that we think of, we're going to be heavily disappointed. We're never going to be fully satisfied because it's a joy that only Christ can create and imagine for us. Only our God can define that true joy for us. So we need to center on God and we need to focus and fix our eyes on God so that we can experience the security and joy that He gives unto us, not the security and joy that we're going to experience in our own definition. May that be our encouragement. May that be our challenge this week. And may these words, the words of Christ, the, the God's words, living and breathing and active word of God, may that bring life into our hearts, minds, and souls in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Love you all, but God loves you more. God bless.